Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Rowing TV Australia. You're with me, Ben Ibrahim. And today we're talking about the topic, adapting to change. And here to help us give us a lot of meat on that topic is Tara Rigney, who represented Australia in the women's single skull last year in Rachichi and won a bronze medal. Tara, how are you? I'm good. How are you? No complaints on my side, Tara. But let's get into it because you've got a very interesting story. You went to a very good school, Loretto Carabilli in Sydney, but you didn't take the traditional path of being a school rower to, to the club rower. You were a netball athlete first, and then you were track and field, 800 meters, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And then you went to rowing. So tell us about, not so much about the, the, the adapt, adaptation of the three sports, but change. How did you go from change from one sport or change to another, not just physically, but environmentally as well? Um, I think the main important thing for me was with change is just change is fine as long as you're enjoying it. So I always enjoyed rowing, but at the time when I stopped rowing, which was in year 10, I enjoyed netball a lot more. And so I think I was just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a different sport because that's what I'm enjoying more at the moment. And I honestly didn't see myself coming back to rowing. And I think if I hadn't done my ACL twice, I wouldn't have returned to rowing. So I had a three-year hiatus, but um, I'm glad I, I rejoined the sport. Do you look at that injury that you experienced right now, that you experienced then, that switched, that forced you to switch to rowing? Do you see, do you see it now as a silver lining? I think everything happens for a reason. And so I think you could say I see it as a silver lining. Um, at the time, I definitely didn't think so. I thought it was the end of the world, but I think it definitely nudged me in the right direction. And as much as I love netball, I think um, my body type and sort of aerobic base is better suited to rowing as opposed to fast twitch muscle fibers that you need more in netball. And then you continued with the sport. I mean, in rowing, you were very successful in the pathway level. You rowed for Australia at the under 23 level. Tell us about that development phase. So I started back rowing September 2018 and I was probably around 10 kilos lighter than I am now. I raced in the lightweight quad at the wow. uni game 2018 and I was a sculler um, and I rode a bit of stroke side at school when we were sweeping and I reckon my first sort of um, golden ticket was... Unfortunately for this girl, she had an injury in the pair and one of the better under 23 sweep rowers at Sydney University needed a pair partner. And so my coach at the time, Alfie Young, asked me, can you row a pair? And I said, oh, I've never done it before. And he said, can you swap sides? And I said, yeah, why not? So I swapped sides to bow side and hopped in the pair and it was awful. I mean, we like it was great, but I caught a crap every race until nationals. But somehow, you know, I had a really talented pair partner and we were on our right and we ended up getting selected as the pair for the 2019 World Champs. And we finished 10th and it was honestly a great learning experience for me and um, very humbling, I think, catching a crab every race until, you know, the last few ones. So it was a good experience. Some athletes... They rode for Australia under 23 level, got the zoot suit. Some say it's time to move on. You know, I've rode for Australia, tick, and the result wasn't brilliant. Tenth, what kept you going? It's a good question. I think there's, honest to God, I don't think there's any shame in being in a B final. I mean, I found myself in a B final every year until this year. So I think those setbacks is, is what really creates good athletes and I think if I was the type of athlete that said or oh, 10th place I'm gonna hang up the shoes there then um I would say that I wasn't very mentally tough so I think those setbacks is what makes you end up achieving your goals in the end and last year in Rachichi that magical race that got you a bronze medal and also during the European regattas that you won a silver medal this close I think to a gold medal <laughs> When you achieve those two results last year, and when you look at that result in 2019, finishing 10th in the women's pair, what are your thoughts going through your head in terms of, oh, wow, I'm so glad I kept going? Obviously, 
I look back at 2019 and I'm like, wow, I have learned so much and I've been really fortunate that I was fostered at Sydney University um, under Alfie Young and now I've been brought to the centre and it's an excellent training program there. Um, but I think, I mean, I look back and I look back at the journey and I just think the main thing is to have fun and to enjoy what you're doing. Um, and I think the more you enjoy the sport, the better you're going to go. So I, I've never really looked at a training session as, you know, something I don't want to do. I honestly got, I enjoy going out for a paddle. So I think those success and just having fun come hand in hand. If you could sum it up in two sentences, row for Australia, what does that mean to you? Two sentences, that's hard. You can go more. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I'm probably biased, but I just think Australia is the best country. And honest to God, I'm just like so glad that I get to put on the Aussie Zooty and I can be on the start line and they'll do the roll call and I'll be like, yeah, I'm Australian. So I think that's the most awesome part is that from the best country in the world.